Press this button right here and we're good to go. Welcome to the closing beat, everybody. Happy, happy Thursday. How we doing out there? All is good? Thank you for joining us here today. We like to talk about the stock market, all that good stuff. I will spare you the normal uh, nonsense there. Welcome, Doc MW. Doc was right that I was right. Comments, welcome. How's it going, Marcus G? Shaleen, I like that name. Kirk and Dan. There's Dan. What's up? We're going to talk about the stock market because we're financial advisors here. That's what we like to do. Other advisors, I don't know what they do. Usually play golf from what I see. Uh, but we like to watch the market. We manage our own funds here, so we work a little bit more, I would say, to be humble than the average bear. I hope you'll check us out at jazzwealth.com. Eric is just sitting here. He's dying to talk to you. He's just sitting. Well, he's not even here. Man's like, I'll just go home. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, you can schedule a call on the website if you'd like to there. Stock market today. The title, The Little Stock Market That Could? How many of you are old enough to understand the reference there? Probably not a lot. Uh... I'm at that weird age right now, right? <laughs> Anyways, uh, hey, give it a shot, right? If we look at the S&P over here, this is the S&P futures. Uh, we sold off and we're pretty uh, down. <laughs> I don't know how to say it. 300 points on the Dow, 30 on the S&P. So we're down to start the day. But just like yesterday, a little bit of buying coming in there. That was odd yesterday. We see the same thing here today. So it's like it's fighting, right? We haven't seen that in a while. Usually when the day is down or starts down, we finish down and it's a nasty down day. We haven't seen many reversal days here lately. Not that this would be a full reversal day, but it almost was. Uh, we had the PPI numbers come out. Yesterday we talked about CPI, which is your inflation cost. Today was the manufacturer's uh, cost. They often say wholesale uh, inflation. It comes in at over 11%. Yikes. Now, core, so anyways, that was up 1.1% month over month. You know, these are big numbers. They don't sound like it, but they're big numbers because when you annualize them, you're like, okay, that's 13%. That's not cool, right? You, nobody wants to pay 13% more to make something. That means they got to pass the cost on to you unless they already have high profit margins and they're willing to take the hit, which we kind of saw today. I'll cover a little bit in the earnings there. Uh, core PPI is the same as core CPI in the sense that they take out energy and food, right? So food manufacturers, energy manufacturers, refiners, drillers, explorers, etc. They take that out. That came in at 8.2%. Uh, that did tick a little bit lower. We saw that last time as well. So that's where people look and kind of say, okay, if the cost of manufacturing something is very high, but not as high as it was. Maybe that means we're peaking overall in total retail inflation numbers there. Um, it's tough because I dug a little bit deeper into this just to make sure the numbers didn't change. Um, in the core PPI numbers, we're not factoring in energy and food. Well, what kind of weighting does energy and food have on the producer price index? It's 11%. So it's kind of like, all right, if you take that 11% out, it's not like we took half of the variables out. We took 11% of them out. So yeah, we don't know, right? It's like, is the market here? Is the economy going to show less inflation? Is the stock market going to hit a low? It's a really interesting time because usually there's a bias, right? Don't fight the trend. The stock market's moving higher. Uh, go until proven otherwise, right? Right now, look at this. I mean, just for like the last month, we've been just been right in this range here. Uh, and you're like, I don't know, is it a low? Do we put a little money to work? There's no pressure to put money to work, but there's no nervousness that the market's going to fall. It's kind of nice it, it, a little bit. In fact, if I could just uh, go off topic a little bit, if you're an options trader, this is the talk of the options world right now, the VIX. If you trade options on the VIX, the volatility index, the fear index, whatever you want to call it, it's the level of puts bought on the S&P, um, it has perfectly priced in the idea that there's just as much risk as you to the upside as there is the downside. Now, it's a little bit different because the VIX goes backwards, right? Uh, this is way off topic. I'm sorry. Deep in the woods here. So when fear increases, typically the market's moving lower, the VIX goes higher. So the risk that the VIX goes higher where the market goes lower is the exact same as the VIX going lower, which means the market would go higher. That's never the case, right? I've never seen that in my lifetime. And I'm not necessarily young, but I'm not necessarily old, right? I get to say that for a few years. So typically, the risk in anything that you invest in is to the downside, right? 
And your margin accounts account for all of that, portfolio margin, whatever you have, they account for the risk being to the downside, whatever level they wanna use. So what they're telling you, what options traders are actually betting on right now is, there is an equal probability that there is risk that the market falls as well as goes up. What does that tell you? They don't have a freaking clue either, right? They're just, they gotta place trades, they gotta get out there and do work. But the probability of the market moving higher or lower right now is a perfect match, at least as of two o'clock today. So what do you do with that, right? You take your hands, you put them under your butt and you sit there. It's called sit on your hands, right? Don't do anything stupid here. There are certain times in the stock market where yes, it falls and that's your opportunity to put money to work. There are certain times where the market's rallying and you say, well, for tax reasons or for you know risk reasons, I might take a little off or I'll just enjoy the ride until proven otherwise. Right now, if you had to make a new decision, I mean, God bless you. I don't know what it is, right? And that's the proof that it's not just me sitting here throwing my hands in the air. It's time to sit on your hands for a minute. This will resolve itself, of course, but that's what you got. Uh, anyways, I went way off topic there. I do apologize. Other economic news today, the 30-year mortgage hits 5.5%. It's up about a quarter percent there. Uh, yikes, 5.5%. I am old enough to know 5.5%, but uh, that's not as good as the 2% we were seeing a while ago. Uh, Fed-wise, uh, we got the Fed making decisions here. Their language, their language is followed by the big banks, the big firms, the big investors, anyone who's interested. There is now a 100% chance of a, at least a 0.75% hike. That was not like that before. Um, remember, the Fed only has one tool to fight inflation. That's raising rates. They've got one arrow in the quiver or whatever they say. Uh, that's it. If it doesn't work, they have nothing else that they can do, right? So despite California saying, we're just going to give out more money, that'll fix it. My God. Uh, that's all they have. Now, it will work, but that's all they have there. Um, we have slowing wages uh, as far as economic numbers that came out, and we have sharply declining savings rates. So we actually track how much you guys are saving in your savings accounts versus spending it. Think about that for a second, and then I'll get back on track. If wages are slowing, wage increases are slowing, and savings rates are declining, are we not about to just solve this inflation thing ourselves? Can't, can't we all just take care of it, right? We're not gonna spend as much because we don't have as much savings. We're, making, we're not making as much money as fast. So it could take care of itself, but the Fed's not willing to wait there. Patients could just do that for us. The Fed says we're not gonna be patients there, uh, patient there. So we had this whiplash to the downside because of COVID, whiplash to the upside because of all of us coming back from COVID. And now the Fed says, we're going to try to fix that right there. There's the risk that they over tighten, right? Which causes another whiplash. When in reality, we may just smooth out that little uh, back and forth that we've had. And there's a word I can't seem to think of, but it, it would just neutralize or find its um, equilibrium. There you go. Found the word there. Uh, so that's what we have going on there. And to prove it, Remember, I've been telling you when the Fed changes their words, people actually track this. There are algorithms that follow this, and you can see how many times they use certain words and if words have changed in their speeches. This is not coincidental. They intentionally do this. They've done it since 1994. Fed members went from saying uh, that we could expect a soft landing. I've already explained that. Then they said soft-ish, right? Then they changed it from soft-ish to bumpy. Ooh, getting a little worse there. Now they said we might have to feel some pain. Okay, that's not soft anymore. Then they said, if we avoid recession, it's because of a lucky decline in inflation. Well, they're kind of controlling the luck right now. And now they've changed the word again. They've changed now their phrases. They're not just words anymore. So now the phrase is, there is near-term recession risk. Okay, that's, we went from being kind of rosy to kind of cloudy there. And today you saw Fed members coming out and saying, we are open to larger rate hikes. Because people are saying, are you going to do 1%? They said, no, we're open to higher rate hikes. They're setting the tone for a possible 1% raise in rates there. We'll find out in about a week and a half, right? Anyways, rambling. Uh, I could do that forever. S&P, uh, I already talked about that. You know where we're at? We're floating around the 20% down year to date area there with little, like I said, little fits and starts along the way there. Bank of America has lowered their target on the index. So you'd have to use the, oops, you have to use the SPX, right? Over here, this is the S&P index. Uh, Bank of America says we're going to be somewhere between the three and 3,200 range, 3,000, 3,200 range there. Uh, the S&P just didn't seem to care, right? I don't know that it should or not, but the S&P didn't care. The last two days, we're still trying to give you that little bit of a rally there. Um, 
what that means, I think, in the short term here is that the Remember how uh, Washington was coming out before the inflation numbers saying, we believe that they'll be elevated, but people need to keep in mind that those are lagging indicators and gas has already fallen. Nothing else. But gas prices have already fallen. So, you know, it's kind of like a number we should probably all just forget about. It's kind of working, right? Agree or disagree with what they said. It's kind of working. People are willing to buy these little bit little dips here. All right, moving on quickly. Energy, XLE, is the only sector that is uh, positive year-to-date, by the way, there. Although it's given back two-thirds of its gains, it still holds the record. It's up about 24% year-to-date. If we look at the NASDAQ here, it actually finished positive on the day. If you take a look at the NASDAQ, you had the big guys playing. Yesterday, it was semis. Today, it's semis. Is that a bottom? Who was asking the other day, right? You were looking at buying the dip here on the semiconductors. We gave you two different areas that technical traders like to look at there. Well, nonetheless, that supported the uh, NASDAQ today. Taiwan Semiconductors had a big part uh, to play as well. So did Apple, which happens to be one of their clients. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, gold, I don't know. Like This is almost more volatile than Bitcoin lately, huh? Uh, gold down another 1.5% there. That's a rate issue. That's the, the U.S. dollar and the inversion in the yield curve issue there. Uh, Bitcoin, I don't know, uh, 20000 That's what it's worth. <laughs> it's, it won't make up its mind there. The Russell down 1%. We talked about interest rates, bonds. Uh, oil was lower on the day. Uh, we got the oil inventory numbers uh, yesterday. Overnight, the oil trades a little bit lower, finishes the electronic session all the way back almost up to uh, the even line here today. So a lot to mention, but really it's a lot to mention. There's not a lot going on, right? So I'm just trying to provide some kind of value in these quiet days here so you keep watching. You know what I mean? See, that's how transparent we are. <laughs> I just tell you. <laughs> all right. New highs and lows. Uh, Match.com. I'm pointing out breakdowns here. Again, the key to breakdowns, if you like looking at this sort of thing, is that the stock is not already extended. A stock that falls sharply, let's just say like right here, if the stock falls sharply and happens to consolidate a little bit there, those are tough breakdowns to play. A stock that falls sharply and spends months consolidating allows for it to work off some of its old oversold condition, and therefore you have a more powerful breakdown as we saw in uh, Match.com. Disney's doing the same thing. I don't know if it's committing to this breakdown or not, but whatever. Illinois Tool Works, see, looks the same there. This would not be as powerful as one because it is extended and has consolidated for just a little bit here down at lows. You would expect that people would still be interested in buying that dip and using that breakdown as a buying opportunity, not a selling opportunity. Uh, well, I put City on the list. All the financials had a bit of a rough go today. I'll talk about in a second, but City broke down. That's just, you see, they're all kind of look the same. Any day I make this list for you, I try to do something, see, there's something to learn. Regions Financial, see how it's in the same camp? Doesn't matter really what you choose today. Uh, they all sort of broke down in one degree or the other, and they all have earnings coming up. So you want to be very careful if you're messing with some of these around earnings. Truest Financial is another one. See what's going on there. It's the same thing. Now, you could use these financials to like hunt around and try to find who's holding up the best, like Truist is holding up. They do have earnings coming up, but uh, you could look for stocks that didn't break down, that held their prior lows. People will start digging through financials and doing that as the earnings come out. Uh, but that's what you have there. What do we got? We got, we got a JP Morgan one? Yeah. We got a JP Morgan one. Let's go to stocks in the news. Well, we talked about it yesterday. JP Morgan had been down seven quarters in a row. Now we'll make it eight. Uh, it misses by 4% on earnings. It stops its share buyback. Oh, wow. Why would we stop our share buyback? Are, are we in trouble? Are we doing something? Kind of. See, JP Morgan is now what's known as a globally systemic important bank. Remember the stress test they just had a while ago? Well, they're that large now because they're trying to be one of the biggest and baddest and also safest lenders out there. And so they have to pay a higher surcharge to the Fed. So instead of the money going to the shareholder in the form of these share buybacks, they now have to pay the Feds on this one uh, because the stress test said you have to do that there. And that's what happens. Uh, loan growth was up 6% versus 4%. So they're on their mission in terms of being one of the largest lenders, if not the largest lenders out there. Jamie Dimon is aggressively trying to do that there. And... Um, what proves it, by the way, is that their estimated charge-offs are actually 20, 21% lower than expected. 
So in terms of being large, we now know, oh, yep, they're globally, uh, systemically important bank. There's a name, there's an acronym for it. Uh, and also their charge off expectations are much lower. Yay, right? Hey, that's pretty cool. So that means that they are in fact growing the loan balance sheet there. They also raised their guidance on net interest income. And then they said, well, it's because the Fed is out there racing to raise rates, which is helping them make a little bit more money on that side. It's not a lot, but... Um, Good for them. Uh, you got Morgan Stanley. We're going to be talking about financials here for a little bit because they're all due to report. Morgan Stanley basically had similar results as JP Morgan. One of the reasons that they did miss today was a $200 million uh, charge that, or fee penalty, whatever you want to call it, from an investigation by the SEC that found out employees were using unapproved devices to communicate. And that's a big deal in the financial world because we have to know what people are saying. It, it, you know, you have to document that stuff. Well, when you're using WhatsApp, things weren't being documented. And in fact, that was what they were using. And so uh, that hurt their e uh, earnings per share overall is $200 million. It's hard to avoid having a bad quarter when things like that happen. Taiwan Semiconductors, like I said, was one of the big helpers. Uh, it is the biggest holding inside the SMH. So you can understand if Taiwan Semiconductors has a good day, chances are uh, they are as well. Taiwan Semiconductors, uh, they're, they're the biggest. I don't know. I don't want to say white label, but they're the, they're the biggest chip maker that's not for themselves, right? So like Apple and AMD, those are They've got to be their two biggest clients, right? So they make the chips and then somebody else slaps their name on it. And that, that's how that works there. Um, it also makes them seem less risky, right? Because it, they're not making their own chips and have their own supply and demand issues there. They get to see supply and demand from other companies as well. Uh, the big deal here, margins. Remember I said before we started earnings season here, margin growth would be the focus you get rewarded as a stock if you can show margin growth. And now you know why it makes all perfect sense there. Gross margins up to 59.1%, operating margins 49%. Revenue was up 8.8%. The dollar, strong dollar held that back a little bit. So they got a little credit for that. And uh, they said, hey, uh, first and second quarter saw excess inventory, but the demand is more than fine. We got about one or two quarters of excess inventory left, but for the moment demand will take care of that. It was a good one. I, I, if you didn't care of everything I just said, just know it was a good earnings report and hopefully you learned something about them there. Uh, what else we got? I seem like I have Amazon on my list today. Uh, this was out of the Wall Street Journal, caught it this morning that uh, companies looking to um, work with the EU to come up with a number so they can settle their uh, antitrust issues over there. Oops, that's the wrong area. And lastly, come on, there you go. ConAgra, a little bit lower here today, down seven and a quarter percent, uh, well, What's, what's the issue? Margin growth, right? That's all the focus was there, right? Sales volume slowed down a little bit, but costs are going up. What do you do? You, that puts pressure on your margins, right? Uh, so that's a tough one for them, down seven and a quarter. I'm actually okay with that. If you, if you are looking, if you were looking at ConAgra, you're sort of happy about this, you know? I like the idea that this takes a little bit of a break, maybe down to 32 or so, uh, but it's gonna be a little bit, I would think. All right, tomorrow, earnings-wise, you got BlackRock, all, all the banks, uh, City, PNC, Progressive. Oh, Progressive in there, huh? So Progressive has been one of those that's been stronger than the market, been stronger than the sector, been strongest in its industry, uh, the strongest in its industry. So you got them reporting. State Street as well, uh, U.S. Bank, United Healthcare, which, remember, is the biggest in the Dow. So if they have a monster move one way or the other, you might notice the Dow seems a little disconnected from everything else. And Wells Fargo. Who cares about Wells Fargo? Uh, the worst tomorrow uh, in terms of performance, actually a tie for Progressive, PNC, and uh, where was the other one? Bank of uh, Citigroup, I'm sorry. Uh, of the last eight quarters, they have all been down uh, six of the last eight, not in a row, but six of the last eight there. I'll take your questions if you have any. Otherwise, I think we've basically done what we need to do here. Let's see what we got. Tanger looking for the short list there. <laughs> People have eyes for that. You know what I mean? That's you can If you've been watching the show, you watch Tanger post a little bit. Um, her eye, I'm assuming it's a her, I'm sorry. Uh, the eye gravitates towards the short side. Doesn't mean that they're always, you know, negative and all that. M my eye never gravitated towards the short side. I couldn't see it the same way. All you have to do is flip the chart upside down, right? 
uh, I just, it didn't catch my eye. So I'm, I'm better at finding pullbacks to buy than to short. There is nothing wrong with that. I like it. Hans wants to allocate 10% to dividend ETFs uh, in a Roth for someone who has 25 years from retirement. I don't like that. I don't like that. Roth accounts for someone with a long time horizon should, if you have your various accounts, that should be the most aggressive, right? Go hard on that one. It's going to be rough. It's going to be a Bronco ride the whole time. Roller coaster, I should probably say, from Texas. I say Bronco. Uh, but you want that to be the most aggressive because you want the most growth out of it. You don't want dividends. I mean, you can do it, I guess, but you want the most growth possible because you don't owe anybody any taxes. So make those accounts as big as possible. Greg says, hey, Eric. Okay, thank you for the compliments. Good looking dude, right? <laughs> I'm not Eric, so we'll let Eric uh, catch that one there. Uh, <laughs> oh, he fixed it? Okay, then my answer to the question. <laughs> Would now be a good time to change my future investment allocations to heavy on stocks, less on bonds. I So I don't know where you're at, right, in terms of do you need this money tomorrow, next year, 10 years, 20 years, whatever. But yes, this is the time if you can stomach it, and everybody should be able to stomach it or just click the button and walk away. This is the time to start taking that extra risk. If for some reason you have found out, oh, wow, my portfolio is really slow. I didn't want it to be slow. I wanted it to be more aggressive. Of course. Yeah, 20% discount, it may get better for you. Uh, so there's no reason, as we started the show, there's no reason to dive all in head first. Just go for it little by little. Take care of it. Remember, 50-50 shot, which way we head from here. But it doesn't mean you can't take advantage of a pullback. I'm with you, despite your Eric comment. But you could, you know, it's better than calling me Justin, right? Dustin means brave fighter. Justin means cowardly sheep herder. Did you know that, Cody? No, I didn't know that. You Although know I that? feel like you've said it a couple of times. But you know what Cody means? Sexy. That's right. That's right. That's right. Just a good-looking dude. That's what Cody means. But I always remember remembered that because my grandmother would call me Justin her whole life. I'm like. Yeah. Listen, lady. Anyways, uh, do you think a 1% rates increase in Canada today influenced the U.S.? Um, I don't think it will have much impact at all. Canada is quite a, if you, I'm assuming you're from there or familiar with it, but they're a little bit different how they handle mortgage rates as that trickles into the mortgage world. Um, it's not like the U.S. The, their amortization tends to be shorter and they tend to have to re-up their loans more often. So that will hurt them over time if, you know, they can't soak up the higher rates. But no, it will not affect the, um, uh, I don't think it affects us here much. What part of Texas are you from, cowboy? You know, to be perfectly honest with you, do you know where I was born? Outside of Dallas. Okay, so I thought so too. <laughs> I said, I was doing like, something where it said, where are you, where were you born? I always said Richardson because I was always told Richardson, Texas. Yeah. I was born in Dallas. Oh, okay. We were from Richardson. They went into Dallas. Ah. I said, well, great. Anything else I should know? <laughs> Here, I've been making this up, I guess. Um, so there's your answer. Uh, you're welcome, Greg. Uh, for an IRA BDA, is it better to transfer the RMD while the market is down? So there's a lot of talk about this uh, in terms, like there's financial advisor magazines and crap that we get that say, now's the time to talk to your clients about tax loss harvesting. And it's okay, you know, duh. Uh, but um, so in that case, uh, if you can, it's the uh, same concept. It's a great time, could get a little bit better, right? I don't know the answer. The market could give you a little bit more, but yeah, that's the time to start looking at things like that. And remember, I actually pointed this out to a client today and they said, I, I didn't know that, I forgot about that or didn't know that to begin with. Um, remember, if you're over 70 and you're still working, that RMD don't have to come out, right? That was one of those little fine print changes. So, or if you're going to turn 70. Oh, I know you were born in Largo, man. Yep, you're right around the corner. See, you grew up in a nice part of town, though. <laughs> uh, MW, I just generate random gibberish and store it in my password manager. It's probably for the best for me, because 
I don't think it was a password. I think so. I, I started uh, slowly taking flying lessons, and I was looking at my birth certificate because you got to have that. And I was trying to punch it into the IACRA system, and I was like, I don't think that's right, man. I'm pretty sure I was born in Richardson. Nope. <laughs> no, no. All right. Uh, any significant bounce would be a good shorting opportunity. There you go. So you're already, and look at that. So doing the homework. Remember I was pointing out the stocks that were really extended and said, well, these, you don't buy these now, but these go like on a watch list because they're really extended. Just the opposite. That's all Tanger's doing. Paul says my company currently has a 5% match with a 401k. Good. Very good. Uh, is there a way to keep the match and transfer the management of the account to y'all? I've already opened up the account. Just need to find it or fund it. Um, normally, no. They're the easy way to tell if you want the, if you don't want to spend a lot of time looking around or asking questions and stuff, you just ask either your HR manager or call the number that's on your statement and it'll be a person. It won't be like some 1-800 number. It'll be just some dude answers. His name will be on there or her name will be on there. Just call and say, Hey, do you offer in-service rollovers? Does my plan offer in-service rollovers? And they'll just say yes or no. And then, you know, if they say yes, then you can. Uh, most of them say, I'd say you've got about a 10% chance that they're going to say yes. But I appreciate the uh, the thought there. Yeah. I love it. You're looking into taking uh, some lessons. Cool. I, I did it when I was much, much younger. And um, I just want, I've been wanting to get back into it. Um, it's just a little hard here because the schools are very busy. So I don't, I don't go often. But I'm hoping that changes soon. But yeah, it's a blast. You know the, the, the old saying, once you... Uh, have tasted flight, you will forever walk the world with your eyes turned skyward for there you've been and there you will or desire to return or something like that. It's in your blood, man. Gets you. I love it. In-service rollover. That's right. Okay, I've rambled enough today. Sorry about that. Hope you learned something. Uh, otherwise, we'll try it again another day. You guys enjoy the rest of your day. Uh, thanks for hanging out with us here and we will see you again.